this? Food. It would seem so. Poison! While some of these foods have kept people going for centuries, from afar they may seem a little odd. Here are the 10 most bizarre foods from around the world. White and Egg Soup – Laos What's the soup over here? Smells delicious! Ant Egg Soup is a classic end-of-summer meal that provides protein and is a source of pride in Laos. Made with all the fall ingredients you would expect from a hearty soup and some you wouldn't expect. Mushrooms, lemongrass, tomatoes, snakehead fish, garlic, a bit of lime juice, dead ants floating on little basil life rafts, ant eggs, and for a bit of bite, ant embryos. The taste of the eggs is similar to that of shrimp, and the eggs burst with the flavor of tangy roe in your mouth. This is the most delicious soup I've ever tasted. This dish should be championed merely for the fact that harvesting the eggs is only for the brave. The ants lay their eggs in spring, which is when the harvester pokes the nest with a stick, tearing it open, spilling the eggs and some not-so-happy ants into an awaiting bucket. Success! Did we mention the part about avoiding the not-so-happy ants that didn't get caught in the bucket? They're mad, so try to avoid getting bitten. The ants will bite to defend their home and babies, and the bites feel like needles pricking you over and over again. This delicacy of rural Laotian life is considered a prize and is sprinkled on salad, mixed into omelets, and wherever else you would like to add a sour pop of flavor. Kopi Luwak, Indonesia. It tastes delicious. Roughly 150 million Americans enjoy at least one cup of coffee a day, not really thinking about where their coffee beans come from. We have a general idea, but might think twice before brewing a cup of the world's most expensive coffee. Kopi Luwak also goes by the name of civet coffee. Civets are small weasel-like animals that roam the forests on the Indonesian islands of Java, Bali, and Sumatra. So what does this have to do with coffee? Well, these animals eat the coffee beans and then they poop the beans out. Oh boy. <laughs> The Asian palm civets are very picky about which coffee cherries they eat. The coffee bean's composition becomes altered by the digestive juices in the civet's stomach, which is why the coffee bean producers say this coffee is so tasty and why it's so expensive. Whew, it's like uh, Jesus washed my tongue. Civet coffee can cost up to $1,300 per kilogram of beans collected in the wild, and as much as $100 per kilogram for farmed beans. Unfortunately, because this coffee is so expensive and flavorful, some people have chosen the route of farming these beans. The civets are caged and force-fed coffee cherries, often in abhorrible conditions. This has led to PETA and the East India Company working together to ban the sales of this type of coffee. Shirako, Japan Weird! Super weird! Okay. This next dish, originating in Japan, is touted as possibly one of the weirdest you'll find. Shirako is fish semen, not a huge leap from caviar, with colors ranging from white as snow to translucent with a pink hue. And here at home, it's called fish milt. Often fried in tempura, served on rice or on custard, shirako has a smooth, velvety texture and has been described as sensual umami or the sweetness of sea air with a melting taste. Fish milt is eaten all over the world, from the US to England, Italy, and Ukraine, to name a few. The recipes and possibilities seem endless. Generally harvested from dead fish, since live fish are not very cooperative, like tuna, cod, pufferfish, carp, and salmon, you can occasionally find octopus or mollusk milt as well. Not only is this a tasty snack, it has health benefits as well. Interesting. It has high levels of protein, vitamins B12 and D, and is believed to have anti-aging properties, as well as being good for the skin. The milk contains such an amazing ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 that it has been used by Nutritech to develop the supplement Cementus. 
Kasu Marzu, Sardinia. Cheese is amazing. It melts in my mouth and in my hands. The whole world loves cheese. So how is it possible that this well-loved, celebrated, award-winning food could be bizarre? Possibly when the cheese's name literally translates to rotten putrid cheese, a cheese that some food scientists believe can cause a condition called pseudomyasis, from larvae surviving the acid in your stomach and remaining in your intestines. Larvae, you say? Kasumarsu is made by allowing pecorino cheese to ferment past the typical fermentation time and bring to it a stage of decomposition. This process is helped along by the larvae, there's that word again, of the cheese fly. The pecorino is left outside with a piece of rind taken out so the flies can lay eggs in the cheese. The flies can lay more than 500 eggs at a time, and when the eggs hatch, out come the stars of the show. The digestive juices of the maggots break down the cheese's fats, thus promoting an extreme level of fermentation. The cheese ends up becoming soft with some liquid seeping out. Oh, oh god, my god, god, what is that? What was that? Is that cheese? Have you eaten cheese? This cheese becomes dangerous because the maggots are left in the cheese when eaten. It's so dangerous, in fact, that it's illegal to sell in most countries and was proclaimed the world's most dangerous cheese in 2009 by the Guinness World Records. Boshintong, Korea it's dog, dog, dog all day long. Boshintong is a traditional stew made with vegetables, dandelion greens, onions, spices, and dog meat. Yes, dog meat. From before the 4th century CE, dogs have been considered livestock, along with the cows, horses, pigs, and chickens. The cows were needed for heavy lifting, and pork was considered to be a meat for special occasions. Dogs were classified as either working dogs or meat, which helped to nourish and feed the lower class and the poor. Poor. Since dogs were considered livestock, the practice of killing them was legal, but the lines are blurred today, making this a stew steeped in tradition and controversy. It's tradition. Young South Koreans have choices and options for foods that their ancestors did not, like McDonald's, Burger King, and other American chains, as well as more options at stores and supermarkets. Dishes from the past are not always necessary for sustenance anymore. Then there's the ethical dilemma that many people have about the practice. Dogs are pets, not food. This argument has been countered by those bound to stand up for their traditions, stating that it isn't right to ban only one type of meat. This controversy has led to many restaurants that made their living selling dog soup to consumers who enjoy it, hiding to keep the traditions and foods of their ancestors alive. Balut, the Philippines. It's not weird, it's my special food, I like it. Balut is a hard-boiled egg with a twist. The egg has been fertilized before cooking it, which means, you guessed it, there's a partially grown chick inside. Balut eggs are generally duck eggs allowed to incubate 16 to 20 days or so. The longer the incubation, the more advanced the chick will be, from embryo to full-grown with feathers and beak. Once considered a dish of the rich, about 200 years ago, you can now enjoy it from street vendors all over Asia. Finding a balut vendor is as common as finding a hot dog vendor. To prepare the balut, the eggs are boiled for up to 20 minutes. They're served warm with your choice of spices or sauces. The top of the egg is cracked open slightly to reveal the broth inside, which some say tastes like chicken soup. This isn't chicken soup. On to the main attraction, the duck. The incubation period determines how hard or soft the bones of the chick will be. This has not stopped balut from being hailed as a cure for everything, including hangovers. It's also been said that it acts as an aphrodisiac. On April 10th, 2015, the world's largest serving of balut was made, and the resulting dish included 1,000 pieces of prepared balut. If you're interested in trying balut, you don't have to go all the way to Asia. There are balut eating contests in New York and New Jersey. Hakar, Iceland. Oh. Oh. oh, what a horrible smell. 
the reeks. Hakar is a national dish of Iceland, enjoyed and served during celebrations as early as pagan times, and has only one ingredient. What is that? Shark, usually Greenland shark. Now, shark itself is not that unusual, but the Greenland shark is poisonous when eaten fresh. The high content of urea and trimethylamine oxide causes an uncomfortable intoxication. It can, however, be consumed safely when processed properly. Traditionally, it was made by gutting a shark and burying it in a shallow, sandy hole covered with rocks. The shark is cured for a couple of months. Once the fermentation process is complete, the shark is hung to dry for several more months before being cut into pieces and served. Today, the shark is dried in plastic containers. Newbies to the hakarl eating world are often warned to plug their noses and dive right in. Greenland sharks are the longest living vertebrates in the world, living up to 500 years, and don't reach sexual maturity until they're 150 years, which means enjoying this natural dish is leading to the extinction of the Greenland shark. Century Egg, China You're the century egg. They took you off the video, right? While it may not take 100 years to make this egg, it certainly looks like it once opened. Not surprisingly, century eggs smell like sulfur. Like, a lot. What do they taste like? I've never tried a century egg before. The taste has been likened to mushrooms, or an overboiled egg that's a bit mushy. The century egg has historical roots dating back to the Ming Dynasty, and the story goes that someone discovered duck eggs that were buried in lye, which extended the shelf life immensely. This dish is traditionally made by covering each egg by hand in a mixture of chemicals that are are so harsh they would cause chemical burns if the chef didn't wear gloves. Just as the eggs we eat every day, century eggs can have health benefits and drawbacks. Some people believe that due to the high concentrations of calcium and vitamin A, these eggs will cure heart disease and cancer. The high levels of sulfur are a bit of a double-edged sword. They can help your nails grow stronger and improve your skin, but it can also cause your arteries to clog if you chow down on this tasty little morsel too often. Scrapple, Philadelphia Cut the pork. Like, that's a thing, right? Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, cream cheese, Philly cheese steaks, yes please, and Scrapple. No, not the game Scrabble, but Scrapple, a loaf made from skin, eyes, brain, and anything else you can think of that comes from a pig. Oddly enough, this isn't the first recipe that comes up in the search engines when looking for a meatloaf recipe. It might not win on Top Chef, but it could definitely be part of a budget-friendly meal. The recipe for making Scrapple would look something like this. Take pig skin, head meat, eyes, leftover organs, and cornmeal. Boil vigorously until the meat breaks down and becomes mushy. Sounds mouthwatering already. It was amazing. It's just like chicken, but juicier. Mash everything together, much like mashed potatoes, until consistent in texture. Press mixture into loaf pan and bake. Once cooked, it would go great with mashed potatoes, steamed vegetables, salad, and don't forget the gravy. Sweetbreads. Oh, is it nice, Fuba? Sweetbreads. Finally, right? Something good. Unfortunately, this has nothing to do with bread or sweetness at all. Found in many countries around the world, from street meat to a main course, sweet bread is used in culinary circles to describe the pancreas and cymus of lamb, pork, and veal. Wow, not quite what you were expecting, right? It can also include many other parts, from heart, cheeks, and esophagus to everything in between. Brain is also considered a sweet bread. Sweet breads are full of vitamins, minerals, and omega-3 fats. They're also rich in potassium, which helps regulate blood pressure, and contain a surprisingly large amount of vitamin C. These are the go-to meats for all your nutritional needs if you're on a 100% carnivorous diet. Not bad. Recipes for this meal are really not that hard to find. A quick Google search will give you more than enough. It is a bit labor-intensive to make, though. Soaking, blanching, shocking are apparently the first steps in making this dish. From there, you can grill, scramble, bake, broil, and deep-fry. Bon appetit, everyone!